Everybody come ready and fired up for the word. Come on, you ready for the word? Come hungry? Well, we're going to dive straight into it, my wife and I. And as you can see, today might be a little bit different, but we're continuing our series called I'm Getting Better. And uh, if you missed it the last few weeks, we really kind of broke down a series, really breaking down 2 Peter chapter 1. And, and the Bible says, man, we're, Jesus is the answer. Amen. Salvation is where it starts. But it says, add to your faith, all these different things, like building on our character. And if you missed it, you need to go back and listen to the past couple of weeks. It was great. We want to continue this. How many would agree with this? We can all get better. Amen. We all want to be better than we are just one week from now, one month from now, one year from now. And so we're going to do this all the way up into Father's Day, which is going to be a blast. And <laughs> I may or may not ride that bull out there. I don't know. So uh, how many think I can make it? Come on, come on. How many think I can make it? Come on, for real? Come on, yeah. All right, we're going to throw some bets down. Come on, we got to get a building. Come on, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> that was good, huh? Yeah. And so, um, but man, it's going to be a blast celebrating all you dads. You don't want to miss it, and uh, it's going to be fun. But if you got your Bibles uh, or you got your notes, we believe in being Bible bringers and note takers, amen, here at Elevate. If you want to, you can turn to your Bible. I believe it's into John chapter 13. John chapter 13. I'm going to kind of hang out there a little bit today, and then we're going to bounce around. Um, but my wife and I, um, this is my wife, by the way, Kristen. Good Come on, show her some love. Yeah. Yes. And we have the honor to be the pastors here, lead pastors at Elevate, along with an incredible team of people and volunteers. And, and uh, that banner out there that says, this is family for us, it's just not a cool statement. Uh, for us, we really want, we, man, we believe that this is family here. Amen. And family is here for one another. And so we were talking this week, and we're like, man, what's a great way to maybe close out uh, this Getting Better series? And so we just, my wife and I, when we launched the church, we had a passion to lead people, number one, to an encounter with Jesus. Uh, that's the number one people uh, purpose, is to lead as many people to Jesus. But on top of that, like our, really deep down in our heart, our passion is we wanted to help as many people grow in their marriage and to grow in their family. Amen? Because how many know if we got healthy marriages and we got healthy families, come on, how many know we can do great things together? Can I get an amen on that? And so we thought, man, it's two of our favorite topics in the world. So we thought we'd take the next two weeks, and we're going to talk about marriage, relationships, and family. And so today, if you want to take notes, we're going to be talking about a better marriage. And then next week, I encourage you to come back next week. We're going to talk about a better family. And uh, it's just going to be a blast. For one, we're going to laugh a lot today. Come on, am I right? Uh, is that all right? Anybody like to laugh in church a little bit? Come on, all right? We're going to laugh a lot. We're going to let you see some pictures and things. that We're going to be transparent and vulnerable just, just for you because we love you, you know, all right? And so we're going to laugh, and we'll laugh some more next week. So if you're hungry for this, I believe God can move in a mighty, mighty, mighty way. And I want to encourage you, let you know, we are going to be talking about a little, we're going to be talking about some topics. Like we're going to be talking about sex. Come on, somebody. I mean, if we're going to talk about anything, we're going to talk about it in church. So if you got some children in here, and uh, I said children, if you got some children in here, and you want to put them in daycare or child care, man, we got them out. We got child care provided for you outside, just giving you a heads up. I'm sure it ain't nothing they ain't heard on YouTube or in school already, all right? But if we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about it in church. But I just want to give everybody kind of a disclaimer. If you got young kids in here, you don't want them to hear about it. If they go back asking, what is sex, mom and daddy? Well, my fault. Your job to answer, okay? But, um, we're going to be talking about some things today when it comes to marriage and relationships. But I want to set the tone real quick on this and pray before we go. Is can we go ahead and agree together? Um, and this is passionate for my wife and I. Can we go ahead and agree together that no matter where you are in your relationship walk, no matter if you're single, no matter if you're dating, no matter if you just experienced a broken relationship, no matter if the relationship that you're in, you felt like they're the one, but maybe it's kind of taking a back seat and you don't know it's going to be shaky. Maybe you just got married and, and things are like marriage. Are like, oh, my God, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's why it says in Ephesians 5, it's a great mystery. Come on, right? And so, like, you're like, oh, my God, this is hard. Like, how is this, how is this going to happen? Or maybe you feel like your marriage is on the rocks of, of divorce. Maybe you've been in here, you've been through divorce. Maybe you've been through multiple divorces. Can we go ahead and just make the statement right now that everything that we're going to talk about today is not intended to be a punch to the gut, but everything that we're going to talk about today is not intended to judge the past, but it's going to do everything to do, say, hey, no matter where I am in life, I'm going to choose to apply these principles, yes. and I'm going to get better starting today. Come on, can I get a good amen, Elevate? Are you with me? Amen? Because it doesn't matter what you've been through. When you apply Jesus to it, everything gets better. So we can, we, can we go ahead and just agree with that? 
We're not going to look at ourselves, man, I wish I'd have done that, or hey, could I have done that, or maybe if I'd done that, then it would have been better. No, let's not look at these things as a punch to gut to judge our past mistakes or past, whether you were right or whether you were wrong. Let's decide today what we talk about is going to help us for our future, amen? Yeah, amen. And we're getting better. Come on, anybody want to get better in marriage and relationships? Yeah. Come on, make some noise. Where are you at at 1115, amen? We're going to have fun. Let's pray this thing up and uh, see what God does. Father, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for every, every relationship. We thank you for every marriage, no matter where people are in life, Lord God. Uh, maybe they've experienced brokenness and divorce, or, or maybe they're going through it right now. They're just trying to hold on. God, I just pray that you use your word, God, and the Holy Spirit take over this place to where you speak to every single one of us on how we can get better and stronger, God. And, Father, we give all the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said... Amen. amen, amen. Can we give it up one more time for God's word? Amen. Come on. It's going to be really, really good. So we thought we'd have a little bit of fun with you guys today. And so and we, we thought we'd maybe share some of our story and our journey a little bit. And uh, we've been married for 14 years. Come on. I'm, I remembered. Come on, somebody. All right. But that's because I had service number one to remember. But um, <coughs> some of y'all catch that later. But, uh, but we've been married 14 years. She's blessed me with, uh, with four children. And uh, we love we love kids, man. Right? Come on. And so, um, but uh, we don't. Y'all heard me say we don't have four kids because we love kids. We got four kids because because we love sex. And uh, but and we love each other. But um, <laughs> that's that's point number three today. And uh, so, but we thought we we'd help you guys with our story. My wife's from Arkansas, and I was born here in H Town. Come on, somebody, H Town, yeah. And uh, traveled all over, and we met in college. And so, but we thought that we would kind of give you guys a little bit of throwback pictures. Anybody want to see some throwback? Like, I'm just going to say you're welcome in advance, but put all the phones away right now. Come on, like, like there's, there's no blackmailing on this right here. So we, we, we went all the way back to high school for y'all. In fact, I think we got my, look at that. Come on, somebody. Hey, what you know about them blonde tips? Come on, am I right? That's me wanting to be in sync slash Ursher slash Genuine slash 98 Degrees. Am I right? Because like. It's all right there. The white cap. You should have seen the shoes, though. Come on, somebody. With that, with that rose. Come on. And then here's my wife. Come on. Look at the lady tiger. Lady tiger. I don't know. I got an awe. That's awesome. You did? <laughs> She's like, oh, my God. Yes. And, uh, and so this is where my daughter gets the volleyball skill. Look at this. This is when we first met. Look Our at that. first Christmas together. Our first Christmas mm-hmm. together. Look at that goatee. Yeah. And, uh, and then, and then we, I, don't, I don't even know what's next. I know we got some. Oh, come on, somebody. These are our engagement pictures. Yes. Come on. How about the shell necklace? Come on, somebody. Anybody? Come on. Anybody? anybody come on. Shop at Pacific Sun. Where you at? <laughs> I know you've been there. How many have watched Road Rolls? Come on, MT. Where are you? Yeah, you did, sinner. And so, uh, but... <laughs> I don't know, but I'm pretty sure, you can go back to that other one. I'm pretty sure we're all, go back to the other one, one before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're all decked out in like Abercrombie and Fitch. Yes, yeah, I'll, yes. You see the holes in the jean? That's from my prayer life. And um, <laughs> How many of y'all believe that? <laughs> you shouldn't believe it. Okay, so you can go to the next slide, whatever that was. Oh, yeah, look at the rooster hair. Look at that. It's like up there. It's and way up at, there. Look at that soul patch. The soul patch is kind of, but look at the look at the picturesque and look at the depth of field back there. Look at just the the beauty of the plethora. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Uh, this is like, oh yeah, just Aww, still like little baby girl, and we got monkey. my wannabe buckle on shirt, and 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 homeboy looking really weird in the background. I don't know what he's doing over there. And then what what else have we got, team? Oh yeah, okay, here we are, the young, still the soul patch. Look at that, she's like scared out of her mind. So are we. And so our, right? we, that was our oh, first yeah, kid. We <laughs> you got to come back for better family next week, okay? So, and then and this is who we are pretty much now. Come on, there we go. Yeah, that's just how we roll, some everybody. <laughs> and so, lean with it, rock with it. And so, um, but we, uh, man, we're we're very passionate about this. We want today to be fun, amen? amen. We want today to be fun because we believe that if there's anywhere you're going to talk about relationships and marriage, and family and sex and, th- and love, like it's got to be in the church. Amen. And, and, and I, j- I know this, some of the things we're going to be talking about is going to be, is going to be a little bit maybe convicting. It was to us when we were prepping this message. I don't, I don't know if y'all know, but we usually preach what we walk through. That's the only way we know how to lead. And, and so the things that we're going to be talking about today, I know it might be like challenging to some, but we just want to bring the truth of God's word because we know if you apply it, 
it'll make your life better. Can I get to get amen on that, right? And so we want to hit a few topics here today. And those topics, if we want to write them down, we're gonna, we're, I'm going to kind of highlight the foundation of marriage, kind of the, set the tone for today. But then we're going to talk about what it means to keep the joy. Everybody say keep the joy. Keep the joy. No, what, what does it mean to really serve each other? Well, like, what does that describe? And then we're going to talk about, which I'm going to try to get to this topic real soon because I want to get to it fast. And that's going to be about sexy and I know it. Fire. Come on. All right? Like, it, like, we're going to try to get there. And I'm going to let my wife teach that topic just because I want to listen to her teach it. Okay? So, and, uh, and so we're, we're going to get to that and hopefully I have a quick altar call and, and y'all get up out of here so I can get up out of here too. And so, um, and, then the, and then we're going to throw in right at the end because I think it will bring it all together is we're going to be talking about how to handle conflict. How to handle conflict. In other words, uh, how, to, how, how do you embrace difficulty in order to build character? And that's what we've been talking about over the last two weeks with, man, what are the things we need to add to our faith? The different supplements, the different character elements to add to our faith to grow. So this is here us saying this is how we can grow in our character with Jesus. And so when it gets down to it, there's this one statement just kind of laying a foundation for marriage, and then I'll hand it to my wife. There's this one thought that I've been really pondering on because you guys know that marriage is the first thing that God created, Right? He created the heavens and the earth, and then he created man and woman. So marriage is the first thing he created, which is also the first thing the devil attacked. Like the devil hates it. He hates marriage. And he will do everything he can to keep a healthy marriage thriving. He will do everything he can to keep you from being the one. We say this all the time. You don't want to be the wrong one when you meet the right one. And being the right one is being like Jesus. And so, so you don't, so, because, but it's hard. I mean, two, when you take a sinner, two, when two sinners marry each other, a sinner and a sinner, it don't make a saint, am I right? And so we got to constantly work at this. And, and so the enemy knows this. So he's, this is why there's so many different divorces and broken relationships and, and, and marriage. And, 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 and that's why it's hard. It's not easy. In fact, my wife and I were sitting here talking. We were asked not too long ago, like, they asked us, what do you think your hardest year of marriage was? And for some, how many was your first year? Come on, just wave at a brother. Am I right? Somebody in your first year, and you're like, whoo! And right? Like, but maybe some of you was different from my wife and I. It was year 10. Year 10 was the hardest year of our life. It, we, we fought more, and she hit me more. And she, <laughs> that's not true. Uh, but, um, but, but like, we just, we just like, we're going, like, it was bad. And it was year 10. For some reason, it was that for, what does that let me know? It lets us know that marriage isn't perfect, and you don't have to be perfect. Like, like you don't have to be searching. There ain't no Jesus Jr. out there. Come on, somebody, all right? There ain't no, like, stop looking for a Jesus Jr. and say, I found the one. No, no, there ain't nobody that's perfect, right? It's just about being committed. You don't have to be perfect, but you just have to be committed. Can I get a get amen on that, right? And if you just stay committed with it, because there's this one thought, like, maybe this is what marriage means. And I want you to write it down if you want to, but it's this. What if God's design for marriage was to make us holy more than to make us happy? What if God's design for marriage is to make us more like him as opposed to be the answer to happiness? People think, if I can just get married, then I'll be happy. If I can just find the one, then I'll finally be happy. If I can just meet somebody, then I'll be And nobody wants to be lonely. I get that. But marriage isn't the answer to the happiness. Yes, yes, there is a side of the joy of the Lord that you will experience when you get married. That's the beauty of what marriage is all about. It gives you a joy that you don't understand until you get married. But marriage in, in, is not the answer to your happiness. Jesus is the answer to your happiness. Are you with me? Come on. Like, that's why you got to be the right one before you, you don't want to be the wrong one when you meet the right one. Like, if you focus on you, I've realized that marriage is it, well, my marriage is at the most peace when I focus on becoming a better me than demanding a better her. When I focus on me, I'm getting better. Whether I feel like I'm right or wrong, and I'm right a lot. How many believe that? Exactly, you're right. I'm wrong a lot. But no matter whether I feel, if I focus so much, I th- in fact, I believe that there's many relationships in marriage, they don't separate because they fall out of love. They separate because they fall out of repentance. You first fall out of love and stop following the things of Jesus before you fall out of love with each other. In fact, I'm as bold to say I believe almost 100% of marriages that end in divorce or relationships that end in brokenness, it all started because somebody stopped doing the things of the Lord. 
So is marriage designed to be more holy than it is to happy? And I know this ain't a popular subject, but how many know something we need to talk about? And if you can focus, the Bible says he created man in his own image. He said, man, and then it goes on to say, man can't live alone. And every man said, amen, right? He said, I'm going to bring you a helper because how many know, men, we need some help. Come on, raise amen. your hand if you don't want to raise you your at? hand. Ladies, come on, come on. Come on. Lay, lay, <laughs> wives, lay, raise their hand for them, right? If they ain't figured it out yet, <laughs> they will. And so, like, like, we need a lot of help. But if God says, I'm going to make you an image and I'm going to bring you a helper, yeah. then just maybe marriage isn't, yes, it's joyful. Man, it makes me happy. We love each other. There's days we hate each other. Come on, somebody. Am I right? <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> we didn't love each other. <laughs> Am I right, babe? That's right. Should we tell them yesterday? No, it's not tell them yesterday. Can, huh? No, it's okay. No, we're... <laughs> It's cool. We, we want to keep our church. And so, um, but, but we, we, y'all think I'm faking. That's true. That's real talk. Come on. So how many know when you're getting ready to preach on something, the devil's going to do everything he can to knock you out so you don't do it. Because I want you to know we ain't perfect up here. Just because we're a pastor don't mean we don't hurt like you hurt. Doesn't mean we don't struggle like you struggle. Doesn't mean we don't experience brokenness like you experience brokenness. But we, we do feel very passionate about understanding the difference between, between covenant and contract. The world has made marriage a contract more than a covenant. Covenant is, is one of the little, covenant says, I'm with you for better or for worse. Covenant is, co- uh, covenant is I surrender my rights and I take responsibility to get better. Like I'm going to give myself to her, but I'm going to take it on my responsibility. I'm going to get better instead of demanding her to get better. A contract is... I'm going to protect my rights about me. And I'm not going to take responsibility to get better. It's on me. And if you don't get better, that's on you. It's on me. And the contract is if you don't get you better because I'm going to protect me, then I'm going to go and find somebody else that's better. And that's not the way God works. God is a covenant God, not a contract God. How many thankful that God didn't put a contract on you based on your decisions and your mistakes? He is a covenant. Like, so when you, went to, like, when you said, I do, I mean, like you go to war. Because the enemy, and it's like, that ain't the us. like, I want to get married now. <laughs> no. It's like, I know it's not the most attractive thing, but it's a war and it's a fight worth fighting. Because even though 10 years was a year of hell for us, yeah, man, it was worth through thick or thin. We believe that God, we saw God's better throughout all of it, and we came out better. You don't have to be perfect. You have to be committed because marriage isn't about being happy. Marriage is about we're better together. I'm more holy. I'm more like Jesus. And when she's more like Jesus, and when I'm more like Jesus, how many know together we are better? Come on, amen, all that. Amen. That's the heartbeat behind it. Let me share this scripture. I'm going to hand it to my wife to kind of dive into our first point. Keep the joy serving each other. John 13, verse 6 and 9 says this. It's about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. It says in verse 6, when Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Like it freaked Peter out. I mean, it freaked him out. Like, we've been studying Peter the last few weeks, talking about the different characteristics from the end of his life. What do we need to add to our life? And and yet he's sitting here saying, you you want to wash my feet? you got to understand the context of the day. Back in the day, they didn't have no J's. They didn't have Yeezys, triple whites. They didn't have, like, they they didn't have any of that stuff. They had sandals and barefoot. The dirtiest part of their body was their feet. So he's like, what, hold up, you about to get all up in my business? Like you're, about to, like, you're about to learn the deepest, darkest parts of, my, of me. Are, are you sure you're ready for that, first of all? Because I ain't cut my toenails in like three months. Come on, somebody. Like, mm-hmm, we know why you wear them shoes. So Come on. Gross. We know why you wear socks with sandals. Come on, somebody. All right? So, like, but come on, how many dads just do that for comfort? Come on, where you at? Hey, hey, hey. I do. Okay, so anyways, but, but it's like you got to, so, like, it's like he didn't know how to let somebody serve him. You got to get that. He didn't know how to let somebody serve him. This is why we believe in premarital counseling, because it pulls out all the dirt so that you're not surprised. And all of a sudden, week two, your spouse does something like, where in the LL Cool J did that come from? (laughs) No, no, no. We talk about it all. Like, we expose the dirt so we can help make it better. So Peter's like, I don't understand. Like, what what do you mean? He didn't understand how to get served. In verse 7, it says, Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing. But someday you will. And then he goes on to say, you will never wash my feet, Peter, because he's hard-headed, protest. And we all hard-headed, am I right? (laughs) He said, but unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. In other words, you won't understand true relationship. 
And then in verse 8, Simon Peter said, I get it. He said, wash my head, wash my hands, wash my body. Like, get me. I'm all you, Jesus. And there's something I think we need to learn because my wife and I, I believe that even in year 10 of marriage, the reason why it was the hardest for us, and even like a day like yesterday, 14 years in was hard for us, is because we're still learning how to serve one another. You don't step into marriage and know exactly how to serve one another. It takes a process. It takes time. And it takes dedication to not give up. It's a covenant, not a contract. So if you're stepping in, you're in a relationship, and you're having a hard time how to serve one another, and you don't understand, realize you're not alone. It's okay. But there's going to be a day if you stay committed. You're going to realize, I get it. You got all of me. Come on, am I right? Like, you get it all. And so the first one is, is first, my wife's going to take her. How do you keep the joy? You do it by serving one another. Somebody say, keep the joy. Keep the joy. Keep the joy. So the greatest marriage that we can have is a servant marriage. It's when two people are trying to outserve each other. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out of your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. When we read John 13 um, and we were talking about the message you know, it kind of hit me, who was the person in the room in the Last Supper? Who was the person with the greatest authority? Jesus. In that room, the Last Supper, Jesus had the most authority. But what did he do? He got down on his hands and his knees, and he served them, and he washed the dirtiest part of their body. And he did that because he knew what being a servant would produce. He knew what with that spirit of servanthood that it would reach, it would go past walls, it would break down walls, and it would open up their hearts for them to receive from the Lord. That's why he chose to serve and do that. And so the whole thing, our whole message is about mutual submission and mutual servanthood. And real quick, I just want to tell you, I want to like draw a line in the sand and tell you whatever y'all dealt with, whatever you've done or didn't do, whatever successes or failures you've had in your past, it doesn't even matter. This day forward, we're talking about getting better. This is not to open up old old wounds. This is not to use it as a weapon against your spouse when you get home. That's not what we're about. This is about us getting better. This is about putting the mirror in front of our hearts and letting the Lord expose our hearts and what we need to work on. So mutual submission is saying individually, you're looking to God and saying, I want to live my life in submission to you, Lord, and do my, and have my life, uh, do my life according to your will. And then, then you look to your spouse and say, I want to meet your needs and put your well-being above my well-being. That's what true submission and servanthood is really about. And as we were preparing this message the Lord really um, impressed on me to talk about why we fear serving our spouse. And I don't know what experiences you've had, what examples that you had with your grandparents or your parents or whomever, but I want to ask you to put that aside and, like, truly examine, like, why do I fear serving my spouse? And the first reason is if I serve them, they'll work me to death. Right? They'll take advantage They'll take advantage of me serving them. I know sometimes he'll ask me to make him a cup of coffee because he's running late. And my first thought is, if he thinks I have time to make him coffee, he's going to think I have time to make him a snack. And yeah. If he thinks I have time to make him a snack, he's going to ask me to run out to the car and grab something for him. Like now That's my, a lie. My thoughts just go in that okay, direction. No, but really... Really, I should be. Like this, huh? yeah. <laughs> I should be thanking the Lord, you guys, that my husband is open and honest enough to be like, "Hey, I'm running late. Can you help me? Can you help me with this? Can you meet this need?" And if because if I don't want to walk around like eggshells around him and not be able to ask for his help, I don't want him walking around eggshells not being able to ask for my help. I want to be open and honest and and serve him in that way and have a peaceful home because I prayed every morning I pray for a peaceful home. But if he can't ask me for help, he's not peaceful. He's walking on eggshells. So when Jesus got down and started washing Peter's feet, he was 
he did not lose his authority, right? We just said that he was the one in the room with the most authority. But what Jesus chose to do was just show his position of where his authority was. Whether it was the top, or the bottom, that's what Jesus was showing was where his authority was coming from. And so when I am serving him, I am fulfilling my job description as a helper. Like the Lord is working on the inside of me because I'm allowing to help him. And I'm not serving him from a place of insecurity or pride, but I have to serve him from a place of humility and with a cheerful heart and with security. And that's where, that's where the want the motivation to serve him more comes from, is from a place of security and humility. The second way that we fear serving our spouse is we think I'm not good enough or they don't want me. Listen, if you're looking to your spouse for your self-worth and your value, it, it will fail because that is not what he's created to do on the inside of me. Jesus yeah. is my Come sustainer. He's where my self-worth comes from. So don't look to your spouse. He, he can encourage you. He encourages me. He pushes me uncomfortably. He challenges me uncomfortably a lot. <laughs> but I'm not getting my self-worth from him because yeah. that's not, he would fail because yeah. that's not what God created him to do. So you have to go yeah. to the one who was, who is Come your self-worth, who is your value. Amen. Amen. And so the faith needed to submit to one another, like that faith releases the powerful work of the Holy Spirit in our life. And what I mean by that is if, if we struggle with they don't want me, if we struggle with that fear or the rejection or feelings of inadequacy, but I'm not serving and allowing the work of the Holy Spirit in me then I'm not going to get any better in that area. So when you serve, you're allowing the Lord to work on that struggle. And you're saying, okay, I'm open, Lord. I'm not being comfortable, but I'm allowing you in. And you're going to choose not to fear. And you're going to choose not to feel inadequate or like they don't want you. Amen? Amen. So the fear of failure is one of the greatest things that husbands deal with. So a lot of times when husbands deal with a fear of failure, they overcompensate in the areas like sports or hobbies or work because they're good at those things. But when they're overcompensating in the things that they're good at, they're failing at the things that they're not good at. And they're not putting the work into the responsibilities that need to be completed for their family to thrive and be healthy. And a lot of times the family struggles and it suffers. And so when men have... Um, that overcompensation and they're not really dealing with the things that need to be dealt with, women tend to try to control the situation and take the reins of the family, which sabotages the marriage because that is not what you and I are created to do. We're not created to lead the family. The word is very clear that this is my leader and I'm to submit and to serve him. And so if we're outside of the design of how God designed marriage, it's not going to be successful and it's not going to be healthy. Amen. Come on. I think that's a good amen right there. So a wife's submission to her husband, it yeah. builds him up. Yeah. And it encourages him. And so if he's struggling in areas or he's not successful in those areas or he's not leading well in certain things, what I'm saying is that when you serve him, it motivates him to want to be successful in those areas that he is lacking. And so it is our responsibility, right, to serve him. And then, then again, he wants to get better because we're showing him that we respect him and that we honor him. So, husbands, I just want to tell you, like, I, like, the Lord was like, you got to tell them this, so I'm telling you, okay? When you serve her, you are showing her that she can trust you. It is like, it's just like, it's like a trust bank, honestly. Like, if we're having a bad day like yesterday, I'm looking back on this trust bank and the evidence of the things that he has served me in, and it is building up my trust again. It is building up the trust to know that we're going to get past that conflict and we're going to get past that argument because we've gotten past it before, and I know that I can trust him. How do you feel when the Lord is providing for you? 
how, when he's faithful and he's meeting your needs and he's giving you hope. Men, you feel secure knowing that the Lord is going to do that. That's the same thing for the ladies. We feel secure and we know we can trust you when you are serving us and when you're meeting our needs and when you're sensitive to us and sensitive to the fact that your four-year-old wiped pooped on the... <laughs> on the wall for no absolute reason at all. No reason. Right? And you're sensitive whenever we want to talk about our coworker who has like driven us nuts for the last five years. And you're still sitting there smiling, listening to the same thing over and over. I get it. I know how we are. I've been there. I <laughs> Come on. But mutual submission, <laughs> mutual submission is what it's about. And I want to kind of go into our next top topic. Favorite which topic. Is Sex. Fire. Oh. Come on, somebody. I'm praying. Come on, crank it up. Come on, wave the hand. Here we go. And Where you at? That I finally found. I know y'all know it. Come on, stop acting saved in here. Come on, sing it up. I pray for someone. Yes. Come on. This is how baby number three came. This song right here. Avery's here because of Casey and JoJo. Okay, you can crank it down. Give it up for the sound team. Then they kill it right there. Some of y'all, we just brought you back to your pre-Jesus days. Come on. A little Casey and JoJo and yes, Jesus. Come on, it's in there playlist. all my life. Oh, tip, tip number one, have a playlist. Have a pl come on, have a baby maker help, playlist. Come on, somebody. Know. Like, if you're married. Yes. Married. Only if you're married. Only. <laughs> okay. Hey, is that all right if we talk about sex today? Come on, sex. Love, relationship, I know everybody just, everybody just went, eh. Right. But we got to talk about it. I'd rather you learn it here than on YouTube. Come on. Absolutely. Okay, I found this version of 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 4, and it's so powerful. It says, certainly, but only within a certain context, it's good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality. The husband seeking to satisfy his wife, the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. Amen. Amen. So for men, sex is a primary need. Like, yes. a primary need. For women, yes. it is a... I'm going to say amen if y'all ain't going to say amen, okay? I just want y'all to know I will speak for you on your back. Y'all afraid to talk in church. I'm not. So for women, it's a secondary need. For most women, although statistics do say that 30% of women are more sexual than their husbands, um, I unfortunately did not fall within that nope. 30%. Nope. Come on, man. But, hey, let's be honest, man. Come on, yeah, like, let's, yeah, on. how many men just wish... God would have put three three buttons on every on it on your like give me just green, yellow, or red, Jesus. Just let me know, Lord. Like, come on, come on, somebody. Am I right? Just let me know. You ever thought, man, it's gonna be one of them knots? Yeah, it's going. And then all of a sudden, it was one of them knots. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. It's like, come on, Lord, help me, Jesus. Like, let me know. Just put red, yellow, green. That's all I need. Come on. Red, hold up. Yellow, I gotta work a little bit. Green, it's lock the kids in the dough. Come on, put them, get them some melatonin. Come on. Crank Casey and JoJo again. Okay, sorry. Okay, are you, are you done? <laughs> Didn't mean to hijack your awesome message, babe. Okay, but with that, <laughs> with the buttons, rarely will the our buttons. libidos match or our needs match at the same time. But it's not about them matching. It's about our attitude. It's about our spirit of serving one another. Because the best sex happens when two people are serving each other. A servant spirit is the only spirit that can guarantee the ultimate sexual experience. And listen, guys, God made us to enjoy sex, like in a Amen. hundred different ways. Like, you missed it, guys. I'm serious. I need y'all to get that. This shouldn't be a taboo thing. Like we should always have the ultimate sexual experience when with our spouse because that's the way that God created it. Amen. Amen. 37%. Preach it. Yes. So it will require sacrifice. Good sex, great sex will require sacrifice. 
And so I kind of want to reference John 13 again. If, if Peter didn't accept Jesus washing his feet, then Peter and Jesus' friendship would have never grown. It wouldn't have gotten any deeper. Because you can't be intimate with someone who is selfish. And Peter was being selfish in that moment because he didn't want Jesus to be all up in his mess and see really what was in his heart and what really his problems were. And so you can be, you can have sex with someone who is selfish, but you can't be intimate, truly intimate with someone who is. And so once Peter, it clicked for Peter and he was like, wash my hands, wash my head, wash, wash everything. Like he knew and then and only then could Jesus really like teach him things and grow deeper and the intimacy grow between him and Jesus. And so sex might be a hot topic here. It might be something you only experience on your birthday or on the holidays. I'm not sure. But that's not the way that God designed it at all. So if you ask a couple who has a healthy sex life, what, what makes it so healthy? They will tell you we have conversations about it. We have a lot of conversations about it. These conversations are not easy. They're not comfortable. They are awkward. But you have to be honest and open. You have to ask the hard questions. You have to yeah. leave your pride at the door. That's right. And you have to really hear what your spouse is saying. You can send all questions to Pastor Chris. Chris at ElevatePeople.tv. <laughs> I just want you to know he's here for you if you need him. C-H-R-I-S at ElevatePeople.tv. He's been on like t a two-week vacation break with his baby. He's back, ready to serve. So load him up and email him, please. That'd be load, great. Load him up with sex questions, there we please. Go. It's his favorite topic. To I mean, you just made a baby, so yeah, it probably is. <laughs> okay. All right. So for the 70% of us who, d who are less sexual than our husbands, I want to speak to you ladies real quick. So... Don't make fun of the fact that your husbands are more sexual than you or that they desire it more than you. Don't dismiss it either and don't sit around and gossip about it with your girlfriends or whomever or complain about it all because that's how God designed our husbands. And it's an innate desire on the inside of him because it keeps him coming back to me. It is a magnet that draws him to me. And I want him drawn to me and nobody else. Right? Proverbs says, Proverbs talks about how he's to take delight in me. And so there's only one of me. And, and if he's not taking delight in me, he's either very sexually frustrated or he's getting it from somewhere else. Uh-oh. We don't want that. Not at all. So, again, it is sacrifice. It is sacrifice. And it's not always going to be comfortable. But it, it is worth it all. Sex will require work. We have to, y'all, um, obviously we have four kids. We have to plan it. Like I'll, I'll call him at least once a week on his way to work, and I'm, it takes us five minutes to go through our week, figure out what nights we're available, and we set it on the calendar and come hell or high water, no matter what's happening in our life. That night, it's going to happen, it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be amazing, right? Don't call me on Tuesday night. <laughs> you shoot me an email, you ain't going to hear from me till Wednesday. I just want you to know. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. No, it's fine. <laughs> so, okay. This is how we lead. Yes. Parents. Yes. But you got to take you got to take it as a priority, honestly. Don't let kids get in the way. Don't let family get in the way. Your family's nothing without your marriage. Like we say that we're joking, but like nothing gets in the way. Like if we're going to plan something, like ain't nothing except Jesus taking me home is going to stop me from being with my wife that night because that is a priority that le feeds to everything else in our life, in yeah. our marriage, in our family. Nothing gets in the way of it. Are you with amen, amen on that? Come on, all right? Amen. And so I just want to leave you with a few things. The first one is appetites can be cultivated. All of us have a, a history and a past before we get married. And we probably had a type of person that we were attracted to, right? But the day that you know that you have met your future spouse, the day that you get married, I encourage you, pray that you are only attracted to this person. Pray that you're attracted to his body, his characteristics, and nobody else. Not that you don't notice or can appreciate someone who's good looking, but like that you're desiring and that you're thinking about your spouse yeah. and about like all the good things about them, right? You, 
God says we can pray for miracles and we can pray for healing, you can also pray that your sex life is amazing and that you're attracted to Come your on. husband and only your husband. Amen. 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 Also, this is the last thing is that he kind of said it in the beginning that Satan will attack your yeah, marriage yeah. because he hates marriage. Well. Y'all can count on it, I promise you. And a lot of times he attacks us in this area and he, he brings in hurt and past relationships and he brings in rejection and, the, and, and just all this fear, right? He's, he's going to throw everything at us sure. to weaken our sex life because he knows that it bonds us together. It brings us closer together. But you can fight that. And he knows that no matter what, no matter what the enemy's is throwing at me or how busy our schedule is, no matter what, we're in this together. Because, y'all, again, this marriage is making me holy. This marriage is discipling me, right? It's teaching me how to serve and how to put aside my pride and put aside myself, right? So although the enemy has a game plan, the Lord's game plan is so much better. And we have to have that word on the inside of us, and we have to pray that the, we will see his attacks. We will know his strategies and where he's coming from. Come on, can we give it up for that? Amen. So as we begin to close here, we want to we want to leave just kind of one last underlining thought behind all of this, and it's just to remind you of that. Remember, is, is marriage and relationships more about being holy than happy? It all just starts about it's it's worth doing it right. If you're single, dating, if you're young, you're a student here, junior high, high school, wherever you are, like purity is the greatest act of character that you can ever keep. Like, do it right. Do it right. Don't, don't allow pornography to sneak in to your life. I think more affairs happen through pornography than they do with people. It, it's legit. Like, don't let it take on your life. Like, f get with somebody. Find some freedom. Get set free. Like, just do it right. Living together isn't the answer. Having sex before marriage isn't the answer. Like, you may feel happiness in that, but life is about holiness, not happiness. It's about being more like the Lord. Like, just do what the Bible says to do. And, and, and just, and just and choose that I'm going to get better and I'm going to live right. And doing it right is worth the wait because there's so much joy in marriage. And I know we mentioned that I was going to talk about handling conflict. and I don't really have time for that because our, our time is up. But the only thing I would say to that is Proverbs 12, 18 says, Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. And everything that I say to my wife, how I handle situations, it can either cut her or heal her. Whenever you're dealing with conflict, this is the part that like, if you constantly live on the road of selfishness, you'll never have a healthy relationship in marriage. Like that's the difference between covenant and contract. Covenant is generosity. Contract is selfishness. Like I'm gonna humble myself, I'm gonna rise above the offense to serve them right where they are, whether I feel right or wrong about it, I'm going to love on them. But here, here's, here's one underlining thought that I, I, want, I want to leave with you guys. No matter where you feel like your marriage or relationship might be, what you've been through, this is a powerful thought that you just, if you get anything today, maybe get this thought, because it kind of puts a weapon back in your hands to go back and fight for your relationship. Is it the Bible? Let me ask you this. Is marriage designed to heal or to hurt? It's to heal. I mean, is Jesus our healer? Yes. He's not designed to hurt, right? Is the Holy Spirit our healer? Yes. He's not designed to hurt. If Jesus and the Holy is our healer, he's here to heal and not to hurt. Do you realize that every single person in here, God put it on the inside of you. This is why being holy, being more like Jesus is the answer to it all. Because you have everything on the inside of you to heal your relationship. For man, the Bible says in Ephesians, to love your wife is what? As Christ loves the church. You know what that word Christ means? It means anointed one. That means this, that men, God put the anointing, hear me, God put the anointing on the inside of you to help bring healing to your wife more than anybody else on this planet. The anointing and the power is in you to bring healing. That's why I say I'm not. I'm going to focus when things are rough. I'm going to focus on being a better me instead of demanding a better her. 
Because I got the anointing. Come on, are you with me? I got the anointing on the inside of me to heal my marriage and to heal my relationship. Ladies, do you realize you carry the image of the Holy Spirit? I don't know if you realize, you both carry the same name. It says the Holy Spirit is our helper. And it's better for man can't live alone. He needs a helper. You carry the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. I call her K-Spirit a lot. Are you with me? In other words, you got the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside. Everything that you need on the inside of you to heal your relationship and to heal your marriage is in you. So many people are waiting. God, just fix them, Jesus. Just fix them. Come on, how many pray that? Like, like they just need to get fixed, get fixed. Why are you sitting here waiting on God when you got the Jesus on the inside of you? You got the anointing in you, and you got the Holy Spirit. Come on, Elevate. I'm trying to help somebody. You got everything you got. Ain't no relationship out of the touch of Jesus. Ain't no work. You, man, God can do anything and help. It's all inside of you. Come on, let's stand together as we start to close. You got the anointing in you. You got the Holy Spirit in you. It doesn't matter how bad it seems. It doesn't matter how many divorces you've had. It doesn't matter how many broken relationships you've had. It doesn't matter if you screwed up last night or like us yesterday. None of that matters. What matters is that you realize that marriage and relationship is more about being holy, being like Jesus. And through that, you'll find happiness. Because when you become more like Jesus... Whenever I use my anointing and she uses her anointing and we're both getting better and working in our relationship with Jesus, when we both focus on becoming more like Jesus, now we are healing one another. We are the answer to one another. And whenever we're not healthy, it's because one of us personally aren't healthy. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you really want to continue? So if you're single, you're dating, Young person, don't be the wrong one when you meet the right one. Do it right. Be committed to church. Get into a summer small group. Go to Connect class today. Get plugged into serving. Like, get find a family. Come to church. Like, get study the word. Like, do everything you can to, to grow in your walk with the Lord. Be like Jesus. Because God will bring you that helper. And together you'll be stronger. Like, the enemy, like, he's terrified of marriage. Because now it's two against one. Last time I checked, two beats one any day. Come on, are you with me? Like, you're better, you're better together. You can have a better marriage. But it all starts with the relationship with Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed.